Hello and welcome to a new devlog video for Peasant Uprise. So before we move on to the topic of the week, I would like to thank all of those of you who have reached out with questions or suggestions regarding Peasant Uprise. I've decided to add a short segment at the end of each video where I'll go over a few of the questions that I have received through the different media outlets. Moving on, this week I've been finalizing level 3 and I'm pretty close to being done. Another thing that I decided to work on this week was to add a few more animations and systems to bring our peasants to life. While the current system looks a little bit daunting, it's really not that bad. Some of the animations that I've added this week are the drink, the pickup animation improvement, and more importantly, I added a system, a behavior state machine to handle the talk animations. Using Unity's animator tool, it's easy to add animation parameters and to test such interactions at runtime. Then it's just a matter of configuring the transitions between each different state and adding the parameters and the values required to make such transition. Once it's all set up, I can play around with the different animations by changing the value of the animation parameters. So we can test the pickup animation and the drink animation that I just created and added to the system. The talk state machine is a little bit more complicated. Once it enters the state machine, it applies a different behavior. It does loop randomly through different talk animations, giving the impression of a full dialogue that doesn't necessarily always look the same. Looking at the animation chart, we can see how the animation is moving from different states. And of course, we can also go ahead and just kill Daisy. But that's not it. Thus far, the dialogue has been uh, two peasants just looking at each other in an idle state, which doesn't really look very realistic. The new system now recognizes when a dialogue exchange hands from one person to another, and it triggers the talk animation parameter. Some of the animations are a tad too long, and that's causing some overlapping. But that's something I can tackle in the next iteration. For now though, I like this little interaction between Daisy and Gerard, and it's these little things that make the world I'm trying to create come alive. This week, I've picked the following three questions. Red Room 03 asks, did you use asset trees or did you make those trees on your own? Well, I have purchased different asset packs here and there, but for the most part, it's a mix. I open an asset that I've purchased in Blender and then I modify it a bit to my liking. Maybe adding more volume to the tree, more leaves, and definitely making sure that the pivot points are where I want them to be as well as adding some roots. I also have applied custom textures to all the trees and rocks, which also means that I had to recreate the UVs for each asset. Astor asks, will there be different types of levels? Each level is kind of unique in its own right. It's handcrafted to complement the story and the world of Swain. But aside from that, there is also another element that sets a type of level. Currently, they follow five different types a farm level, forest, rocky, town, and vine country. 
These levels are different in what resources will be available to the player and the scenery that the player will encounter there. Aside from these different types of level, there are also four distinct regions in Swain, each adding their own flavor. The music would be different per region and the architecture will also have some differences. How peasants behave and feel about Ashland occupation will also change per region. So like you can see, there are enough elements and variables in each level to make it look pretty distinct. Urusan, son of the Arusan, asks, do you know whether adding highlights and lowlights to 3D terrain like this is a common modeling technique? I don't know. <laughs> I was just playing around with the textures and decided to give it a go and liked how it looked. So I did not start doing this technique because I read somewhere that it was a standard if that's what you're asking. Maybe it is a standard, I don't know. I think the best takeaway for other game devs is to not be afraid to try things out. And why not? Try to apply different principles that work on other mediums into game development. For example, I've also been playing around adding three-point lighting principles into my game. So that's all for the FAQs of this week. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment or send me an email and I'll cover it in the next devlog. Thank you so much. With that said, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next update.